welcome to another episode of To the Fullest. Today, uh, my guest, very talented artist and video engineer, Mr. Clinton Long. How are you doing today, my brother? Swell as hell, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. It was yoga day today, so I'm oh. especially calm that's, and at peace today. That's why it's you fantastic. seem so zen right now. Absolutely, man. So, And you look uh, especially well, man. What are you doing? You've been working out? You've been eating well? Uh, you know, I was, I was working out there a lot, and then I think the, uh, the pandemic depression kind of set in, and I, I took like, I don't know. The last day I have logged is June 24th, and I was working out like really hard every day until that point. And I'd lost 50 pounds, but I put 10 pounds back on, and I'm trying to get back into it. Yeah, 50 pounds is an incredible amount of weight to put, pull off, man. Yeah, so, I, was, I mean, I was a you fat still fuck, look dude. fucking fantastic. Thanks, buddy. You know, you're killing it, man. So what you been doing? Uh, you been getting your diet back together, or what you been eating, man? I've been doing all kinds of crazy shit with my diet. No. No? No, I have not, because my... Uh, during this pandemic, my, my girlfriend has become, like, she's focused on cooking and baking. And That's right. So, yeah, we have, uh, like, a new loaf of sourdough in the kitchen every day. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to count my calories now. <laughs> you know? Nice sourdough. I love sourdough. Yeah. That's just the bomb. So, yeah, you've been doing all kinds of uh, killer art projects, though, man. I see you online doing um, some amazing artwork on doors and doing paintings, and mm. you have some uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, I think you brought some to share here. Yeah. And we'll dive right into that real quick, man. We got this cool-ass hallway that you were doing, which is just incredible. So this is in my house, uh, and I try to make like each hallway kind of themed. So I'm a fan of uh, Shepherd Ferry from Obey. So this is my Obey hallway. And this, uh, these photos are just kind of showing the process from start to finish. Uh, I hand painted the stripes on there with a sponge brush. Took for fucking ever. <laughs> and th what you're actually seeing there, the Obey artwork, uh, that is a decal, mostly a decal. Some some of the more intricate pieces of the decal fell off, so I had to hand paint them in. But uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Oh, the stairs look incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of work. How long did it take you to get that all done? Like, I think, I mean, mostly the 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 big pain of it was the stripes. Because I was hand painting them, and originally I, I had hand painted, uh, so the the wall I had painted gray, and then when it came to the stripes, I had hand painted them uh, in a gunmetal acrylic, and it just wasn't popping the way I wanted to. So then I went back and bought some, I believe that was Van Dyke Brown house paint, and repainted over it. So it was probably about a two week process from start to finish, just a fucking paint and stripes. But when you're dealing with orange peel walls, you know, it's not as easy as just putting masking tape down and painting. You're going to get a lot of bleed through. So it seemed like that was the best way to handle it. Those stripes came out super straight, too, man. I mean, that's just incredible. Thanks, buddy. That would uh, be quite the uh, challenge. But uh, I also enjoyed this piece that I saw out of this folder as well. That's uh, a Banksy reprint. Um, and I put that there on a door hinge. Uh, Boom. There you go, to, to hide my thermostat, my uh, security uh, panel there. Yeah, that's really clever, man, because I just, I never even thought about hiding that behind a nice piece of art like that that just pulls out. But that mm -hmm. is genius. I should be doing some stuff like that in my house, man. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've been enjoying your art. Oh, man, yeah, look at this. I just because i like the uh, star wars stuff as you all know fucking yeah, han so solo and carbonite that's the first floor it's all uh star wars related art on the first floor when you walk into the house that's awesome yeah that shit's tight man my house is just covered in all that star wars shit. i'm actually going my star wars shirt. Like, yeah my star wars shirt i have pretty much half my shirts are star wars shirts there's nothing wrong with that of course but no i love it i love it a lot Although I still haven't watched The Mandalorian yet. I was just about to ask. Yeah, I still haven't watched that shit. We've well, got to put that on the list. Yeah. I, mean, I was waiting uh, for it all to come out. I think the second season's coming out in a month or two. Oh, really? I think it's like, I think I read October. Okay. So it's great, man. I think it's, it's some of the best Star Wars related material I've seen in a long time. Yeah, Disney does a great job with all that stuff, man. I'm yeah. glad they picked it up because they're just pumping out Star Wars stuff and creating that 
whole universe that Lucas always wanted to create. Yeah, I didn't really care for the last two, though. No, the, the Skywalker trilogy yeah. turned to dog shit. The, the thing that they did there was horrible, but the whole, you know, all the side stuff, the Solo and the Rogue One, I yeah. love that. that. That was great. Uh, and then, yeah, they have the Mandalorian that's come out that everybody's raving about. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to watch it all at once. I watched oh. the first episode and I was like, oh, God damn it. I don't want <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to wait till next week to fucking watch this thing. So, and then I just spaced it. Yeah. But now that's the best way to do it, man. I, I have no patience for appointment television. I can't do it. Yeah. You know. I just want to watch it when I have time to sit down, and it's like I'll watch three or four in a row, man. Like, mm. let me get this thing on, get a good little session in. But uh, yeah, everybody's raving about that baby Yoda. But yeah, I want. It sucks that uh, what's it called? The Star Wars World opened right as this COVID bullshit happened. Is that out at Disneyland or Disney World? Uh, it's Disneyland, just right here in cool. LA. I was uh, I was there recently, like a year ago. Uh, on a gig and you could see it being built in the background super huge man and they had a little space where you could go see what they were doing and get you all pumped mm. pay them whatever it is 200 300 dollars a day to go are to star they, wars World. are they actually closed down or are they i think they're doing some kind of social distancing thing but uh i don't know man uh Going to an amusement park when there's a virus going around sounds kind of fishy. Know, I know, and I agree with you on that. Um, my cousin was telling me he went to Universal Studios and had like a, a me day, mm -hmm. you know, just like two weeks ago. And, and I was like, that doesn't sound like a good idea. And he said, no. He's like, you wouldn't believe like just how safe, just the measures they were taking. Everybody had to wear a mask. There was uh, hand sanitizer everywhere. Before you got on a ride, they would check your temperature and, and escort hand sanitizer on your hands to make sure you weren't spreading germs on on uh, the rides and whatnot. And he was like, I felt very safe there. And I'm like, wow, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have <laughs> taken that risk personally, but, you know, good for you. Yeah, seriously, man. Not for a roller coaster. Yeah. That's a little I'm much. a germaphobe, man, so I'm... I'm I'm happy whenever I see people taking uh, precautions and taking this whole thing seriously. We should have been taking all these precautions like this a long time ago because it's mm. always a, an issue, even the common flu, you know, and like if we would just take these precautions, it would help a lot with all diseases being spread around and like people cleaning door handles and like, yeah, you know, sanitizing shopping carts all the time regularly. It's like, thank you. Fuck's sake! Yes, wipe door handles off. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever does that shit. Well, I don't. I don't know what what cultures like in, in many other countries, but in ours, we we just seem uh, there's so much inconsideration that I see everywhere. Oh yeah. Every time I use a public bathroom, I just lose all faith in humanity. I'm like, we're screwed. We're we're not moving forward. This this is this is a sign. This is awful. Well, America is a terrible example of humanity, you know, we're the most selfish culture Absolutely. that you could possibly imagine on this planet. And, you know, it's all for me and fucking get out of my way. Yeah, and that's really that should be on the dollar bill <laughs> because uh, that's how everybody behaves out here. Mm. And I was uh, I just like traffic, man. Like, I haven't been driven in a while, but I had to drive across town to go get some uh, some shit done. And. People are insane. Yep. Like, I'm doing the speed limit, cutting, you know, or um, signaling and, and changing lanes to get to my exit calmly, well beforehand. And people are fucking speeding up and <laughs> slamming into me and squirreling around me and shit like I'm the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not, I'm, dude, you don't have to be doing 90, and you could have gone around me at any point of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they just, they're just going to cause accidents, but they're so fucking enraged and gotta get there gotta yeah. get there right now people suck yeah you know it's this uh lack of awareness that we're all in this game together whether you like it or not mm -hmm. and it could be a lot nicer if we all just accepted that and treated each other you know, i'm still waiting for such. a good mass shooting I don't think that's ever going to happen, but <laughs> a good but one. Like, what defines like, a good one? Like one where they're just taking out bad guys, you know, bad oh, okay. people, and the nation is able to evolve and move into a better place, you know. 
Well, that's, that's, I know that sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> well, who are the who are the bad guys, right? It's like that's exactly. always a relative yeah. thing, depending on who you ask. But you know, if you go to a concert and shoot a bunch of people there, that's that's not good, you know. No. Uh, no. I don't know. I I don't have an example to support that, but yeah, you know, just always waiting, like, oh, another mass shooting. Why couldn't they kill some bad guys? You know, why couldn't they make this place better? Yeah, man. But it's it's never. It's like uh, that. I because I don't think killing people is really going to make the place that much better no you know? uh because it just doesn't ever make anything better you know? yeah. yeah but and there aren't really good people or bad people in my personal opinion right like i mean uh there's some extreme examples of that though that you can start throwing around right but for the most part uh the majority of people besides like f- fucked up people and they and they have broken brains are just doing what they think is the best thing they should do at the moment yeah. even if nobody agrees with them right it's mm. like uh but then everybody wants to call that like a bad thing yeah. like that guy doesn't agree with the what it, the status quo is or that guy's doing some dipshit thing you know and it's like well in their head they're just getting through life and everything is this disaster around them and you know, probably very depressed, mm. you know, like dickheads that like leave their shopping carts in the middle of, <laughs> you know, parking spots and just throw their fucking masks on the ground, you know, yeah. looking at the world through our, their eyes has got to be pretty bleak. Well, I think social media has definitely shown us that uh, you could get into arguments with people, but you're not going to change anybody's mind. No. Um you could have all the the proof that you need, and people are either set in their ways or just extremely brainwashed. Whatever the case is, so both, yeah, for the most part. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually on a on a total trip myself of like de brainwashing, like like a subconscious wipe. Anytime I find myself with these habitual things that are going on in my life, mm. I try to like focus in on them and get that shit out of there because I realize that it's this it's just all these things that are forced to habit. I'm like this fucking uh autopilot flesh robot that's just going through life doing these things that I've always done because that's mm. why I, I do them that way, you know, because I've always done them that way. And yeah. That's how things are supposed to go, right? Mm-hmm you get caught in that loop i don't know but i've been uh like one of the ones i always try to bring up that i'm I'm trying to get better at is uh the swearing thing Mm -hmm. because i made that conscious effort i was like i'm just gonna not swear that much anymore you guys but you know that fucking bitch down the street (laughs) and i'm like oh fuck i can't stop doing it you know and and i realized it was like uh oh that's deep Mm -hmm. that's like deep in there yeah and uh if you can't consciously like uh you know like i could when I'm at work or something, you know, I'm like, think about everything you fucking say mm. before it comes out of your mouth. Uh, but then when you get lost in conversation and you're just having fun, it uh, it comes out real easily. And yeah. it's one of those things where I'll even replace the word like, uh, or like the, the, the stall of a thought, uh, to gather a thought with fucking. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this hypnotic thing that's going on in my brain, mm. like way deep in my subconscious. And I have no control over it. And so every time it does it now, because I'm aware of it, because I put that pin in it, where mm. when I say fuck, I go, boom. And I go, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> watch, your, watch your mouth, potty mouth. Sometimes, sometimes you need it, though. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's no. a very emphatic word, you know. Sometimes you, you need that to get your point across. Totally. But if you're just reaching for it, you know, just to waste time or whatever, I could see, like, yeah, I need to come up with a better economy of words because that one's not I, i've already used that one too much so. yeah if you've been talking to someone for five minutes and you said fuck 20 times you sound like a dumbass you do yeah, yeah. and i'm trying not to do that so much <laughs> this thing really you know when we started editing this and we start seeing yourself talk for two hours you're like i have a sailor's mouth <laughs> and i sound like a dumbass <laughs> I've never thought you sounded dumb, dude. Right. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate you. This is my first time being on your podcast, though, so I 
probably have, I don't know, another hour and a half to <laughs> prove to you wrong. Out, yeah. Well, you know, however long it goes, it goes, man, you know? Right on. I don't have to hold you hostage for the, the whole two hours, but a lot of times it ends up going that long because we just have some fun. I'm enjoying not working today, so... Yeah, I like I like the whole not having to go put on uh, pants and <laughs> and do the work thing as well. It was only 106 when I left my house today, which uh, like two weeks ago was 119. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I'll take 106 over 119. We can't even walk the friggin' dog when the sun goes down, dude. I swear, I feel like I'm gonna catch fire when I just go check my mail. I'm like, ah, I gotta get back inside. It's brutal. Plus, dude. I'm so pale, like I, I actually reflect the sun, and I, mean, <laughs> I don't have the nicest neighbors, so I don't really mind blinding them. But you know, it's, uh, it's not very cool. Uh, yeah, man, I am. Uh, I'm definitely right there with you with the uh, the Irish and the German blood in me. Freaking pale as all get out, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. We're doing the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sun's not my friend at all. I've been good about uh, staying the hell out of it after around eleven o'clock. You know, like let that shit. That shit go down. You could be whiter, by the way. I don't want to be in any competitions to be the whitest person. No, me neither. That's not. Nobody wins that contest. No. You just get sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that happens. Uh, that's very good, funny. Yeah, my whole damn life hiding from the sun. Same with my eyes, man. I uh, I have no melanin in my eyes, man. They're just like I start tearing up hard when I go out in the sun if I don't got some thick shades on. <laughs> it is my enemy, man. I love the sun too, but it just it wants to it just wants to hurt me. Yeah, it wants to hurt me. Uh, here's another th cool thing that you did. I'm going to cut to some more of your art with this Bowie series because the Bowie series is tight. I love Bowie. So, yeah, this, that is, uh, I went up to a blueprint shop. I, well, first I made that on Photoshop. I went to a blueprint shop, had them printed out uh, in the size that I wanted it, which uh, is uh, about a 24-inch oh. circle. Printed out... Oh. Uh, Put it over, actually, that's a 24-inch tabletop. And then I started my uh, cutting process, which took me a full day of, of cutting with an exacto knife until my hand was crippled. <laughs> and so that was, I initially painted that tabletop black, and then that was the first layer of Bowie and Ziggy, which was silver. And then, so that's the second layer, which was all, uh, which is the lettering and the circular part of it, which is all um, painted in desert rose gold. And I kind of like that, but I felt like I needed to do more. And especially the way oh. Bowie was looking right there, uh, he was looking more well-defined just with a black layer than Ziggy Stardust was. So I knew I had to do a couple more layers. So, uh, so that's the finished piece after epoxying it, uh, before the epoxy cured. But... Um, yeah, and I, I think I'm going to do a couple great. more. Yeah, I, I made a big mistake there. Uh, when I was I was putting song titles in the background, I put Major Tom as one of the song titles. and that's Yeah, not, up in the top left corner here. That's, that's a lyric, but not a song title, because the actual song title is Space Odyssey. So yeah. I probably shouldn't point that out, but uh, when and if I make another one, I'm going to, uh, it to counts. amend that. Yeah. It counts. Anybody that's a hardcore Bowie fan would point that out pretty quickly. That's funny, man. Yeah, I, uh, no, I guess I'm not a hardcore Bowie fan, although I do. I, I was like, oh, Major Tom, tight. Oh, Rebel, Rebel. Well, I just like, that's how it went in my brain. I, I'm not, right I'm not a huge Bowie fan myself. Um, a friend of mine asked me if I could do a David Bowie mural in her house. And I said, yeah, I'd love to. So that was a design I came up with. And she was like, ah, I don't really like those pictures in particular. And said okay well i do <laughs> so i said i'd you know i'm gonna do this myself for you know a piece i can hang in my house maybe sell i don't know <clears throat> so i still haven't gotten the right design together for her yet but uh we'll see there's no the rush uh the curse of the artist you're like well i already saw it in my head i gotta get, <laughs> i gotta get it out now <laughs> i like what i've done here i i must i must broach this so yeah uh. That's that's one thing that really sucks about doing art is the subjectivity of it. You know, it's like I, I could do something and really like it. 
Um, I used to do uh, graphics and whatnot for people. And um, the problem, like, I don't really have any formal training in that, you know, other than, you know, art classes or whatever, finding stuff on YouTube. But uh, so I'd come up with some designs for people and I'd give them way too many options. I think the, the rule of design is to give the client three options. I'd give them like 10. And they would always choose the one that I spent like five minutes on. That I had no pride in whatsoever. The one that I spent like five hours on, um, oh, you're going to love this. No, nah, it's not really for me. I like this one. Like, really? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so any kind of design work, it, it definitely has that, um, that negative aspect to it, you know? Yeah, it's hard when you're, uh, when you're making work. Your, like your art, your work. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in the process right now of actually getting like a little design going for the show, and right. uh, and yeah, it's a process, man. You know, he's like, I thought you had chosen yeah. one. I remember you post on social media about it. I uh, yeah, I had uh, I posted, and then I uh, I like started building the website, building the website, and then like time passed without me thinking. And then I was like, oh man, we need to get that. Mm-hmm. We need to get that logo going. Uh, and then, yeah, just, I asked like a couple dudes, put a logo together and still, still working on it. Still working on it, but the website's almost done. It's, uh, fucking quite a process to put together with the podcast. It's like, you know, 30 pages of a website that you got to write, you know, because every episode has a page and oh all that, yeah. yeah. So, and then now, of course, every time we air an episode i gotta go fucking make sure that the page is ready as well so mm. it adds a little bit more to it but it looks it looks pro man it looks nice right on so yeah yeah but that, that the logo process you know you get sent samples and then it's like uh, i don't like that <laughs> how is your uh what's the word viewership <laughs> been so far you have you been, been getting a lot of people watching yeah we get like like 100 views an episode on That's average cool. and then you know as time goes on they start slowly climbing so um we're well on our way to our like it's a thousand subscribers 4000 watch hours mm-hmm. so we're like at like the 12% like the the fucking arrow starting to move you know like That's every cool. Like, uh, as opposed to the slow climb of like trying to figure stuff out and get, you know, we got, got a system going and, and, uh, yeah, we're excited. We're excited to see it actually starting to fill up and, uh, shits in triple digits and it's, right on. it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. And we're, we're getting, like I was saying, we're getting ready to do uh, a lot of the, uh, auxiliary videos. So we're going out probably next weekend. Mm. Um, and doing our first like official shoot with the the yoga stuff that we're gonna do, and then we're also gonna do some like vegetarian cooking shit in the kitchen. That's cool. And some some meditation stuff. We're Are doing you vegetarian? All these we actually just switched, um, so we're like kind of vegetarian, right? Like five six nights a week, we're eating veggies, and I That's love cool. it. Honestly, it is fantastic. It was like painless transition, mm-hmm. but that's also because. If I feel like having a burger, you know, like I was like, I went and got a bacon cheeseburger, <laughs> you know, like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be healthy and everything, but uh, at the same time, I don't want to, I'm living my life. Yeah, and, uh, and so, yeah, most of the time I'm just eating veggies though. And we, and that, of course that burger, you know, my stomach was like, even after a week or so, my stomach was like burger and bacon and all that shit mm. ain't sitting right, bro. I went vegetarian for a year, and uh, for the most part, it wasn't that bad. The one yeah. thing I really missed was steak. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, I was like, oh, man, I, I could really, really go for, like, a New York strip right now. But um, for the most part, you know enough recipes. There's enough substitutes out there. Uh, but at the time, I think uh, too much soy was was a concern we were having. You know, I didn't. Yeah. What I was reading was you could get uh, "quote unquote" bitch tits from eating too much soy. The like, I, don't, I don't. I don't want that. So. <laughs> yeah, we don't do any of the. Um, we don't do any of the tofu or anything. We just uh, straight up eat veggies and rice and. Uh, you know, I like, uh, what was yesterday? Yesterday was like oatmeal for breakfast, bagel for lunch and some fresh fruit and, mm. uh, veggies and rice for dinner. What do we do for dinner? Yeah. Yeah. Veggies and rice. 
Right on. It's so easy to do. You chop up a zucchini and a squash, throw some peppers in that bitch, and you fry guys, for like 10 minutes less. Are you guys growing all that now? We are trying. Yeah. You know, we got. Last time I was over here, I saw your backyard, and I was very impressed with uh, how you have everything set up back there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we uh, we're pulling we're pulling some stuff out of the backyard for sure. Uh, it's just hot as balls out right now, so it's, it's, it, is. it is hurting. But uh, we got some beets out of the backyard that were geared up to uh, put in a salad or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, we've been getting peppers. The peppers are the right bomb. And, uh, and, like, all our herbs. And we had some tomatoes. And, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, the tomatoes came out really good. I was surprised. Like, been, I figured uh, they'd be dry partaking in in the uh hatch green chili season no what's that uh, hatch green chilies i guess are in bloom and uh so my girlfriend's been making hatch green chili sourdough and she's just been getting order and order after order for it oh and so uh like every day uh my house is smelling like roasted hatch green chilies i'm not complaining it's it's a great smell i, I dig it <laughs> but uh you know she's buying like 10 pounds at a time we, we're running out of kitchen space for it all what is it we made hash mac and cheese so ooh oh yeah we did we did do some mac and cheese i guess with those that's that's the best way to do it angela coming in letting us know what's up AJ in the house taking pictures <laughs> making mac and cheese oh by the way am I getting an executive producer credit on this show or? absolutely <laughs> absolutely I'll, I'll roll credits at the end it'll be you know <laughs> Angela <and you. laughs> cool <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it'll go man you know so uh, oh, oh, oh. let's do another one of these things right here we have some I, I, I enjoy all the multimedia stuff that you brought with you thank you so that's um, some friends of mine. They they asked me to uh, do some wood walls in their house. And that's that's the after photo after uh, I did the wood walls. And that's oh. the before of their island. Oh yeah, the island. And came out like they that. asked me if I could do a herringbone. I said I'll try. So that's my very first herringbone. I think it came out pretty nice. Hell yeah, pretty it came happy out with nice. It. They're happy with it. That's that's what really matters. That's always the most important thing. But yeah, I've just been trying to keep busy doing stuff like this, man. It. Uh, no, this is the before of that wall, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> but that's that's stuff I've been pretty passionate about. You know, I'm not really passionate about the stuff we do in AV, but yeah. the money's good, so kind of affords me the ability to to go and do stuff like that. That's awesome. So trying to stay busy with it. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too, man. It's like I really love the audio shit, right? Mm -hmm. But like for corporate work, man, it's not it's not making. Uh, rock concerts happen. No, I'm doing all kinds of uh, cool shit like that. You know, like I, but I, I do love flying mm -hmm. big ass line arrays. Right, it on. is nice. I don't mind having all that time to read a book. <laughs> there you go. Actually, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the band Idols, but they're doing like no. a three day streaming from uh, Abbey Road Studios. Oh, that's sick. So I bought all the tickets for that. And uh, they're a band I got turned on to maybe two months ago, and I just, it's like all I've been listening to for two months. My girlfriend's hating it. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you would listen to something else. I'm like, but they really speak to my soul. That's what happens when you find a new band. Yeah. You know, just you fucking start getting into it, and you're like, I'm going to listen to all their albums, and mm. I'm going to, you know, start learning these songs and getting them in my brain like my favorite bands are in there as well. Freaking, uh, what is it, like Pantera? growing up i listened to so much freaking pantera you put the, one of those records on it's like oh i re remember this entire record all the way through mm -hmm. it's freaking ridiculous yeah, i was in a band in the late 90s i sang if, if you want to call it singing it was more of like you know yelling and shouting and screaming but uh, uh all of my band members worshipped pantera they yeah would, they course. would watch all the pantera you know vhs videos of all their concerts and whatnot and behind the scenes and uh I was the one guy that was like, hey, guys, I'm really into The Cure. They were like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Pantera is life. Like, All right. Uh, that's how it was growing up, man. Like, yeah. fucking Pantera was, like, on top of the uh, the metal pyramid, you mm. know. And they, they, they were just infallible. Every song on their record was a fucking killer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they just... Uh, 
oh, what a fucking metal band. Yeah. I wish there was another metal band like them around, but there really ain't. The, I mean, I've, I've fallen off of the metal thing, to be completely honest. Like, the newest metal band I listen to is probably, uh, like, Way of a God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're not fucking new at all. How do you know, uh, not to change the subject, but how do you know Genocide? I, I noticed you did an episode with her. Oh, man, Genocide? Man, this is such a small town. It's like we all know each other. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's always weird to me when... Like, I go over to a friend's house, and somebody else that I know is there, and I'm like, I didn't know you guys knew each other. And that happens so much. I've lived out here since uh, 2014, and it happens, like, all the time. Well, especially if you're in the entertainment industry, right? Because yeah. the entertainment industry circle out here is real small. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's, I mean, that's where we met. Honestly, I was mixing bands down on Fremont Street, and I was working at the Canyon Club in the Four Queens, and... That was getting ready to fall apart, as mm-hmm. clubs do. And I met Genocide. I don't even know the, how. I think she was coming in. You know, maybe through Forest. You know Forest Gross? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was probably coming into the Canyon Club. That was back before I quit drinking, bro. So, you <laughs> know what I mean? Like, the the memories are all kind of blurry. But, uh, no, the, uh, she hooked me up with the, the beauty bar gig after that. She's like, oh, oh right the beauty bar needs a guy. You can just kind of shift into that position. And mm-hmm. um, actually, that's also how I got in. She was doing Jillian's as well down there. And so I was kind of like bouncing for a mm-hmm. second. Uh, that's where I met Danny Gentile, who I ended up working at Vamped with. He was right. running... Jillian's and then he ended up being the manager of Vamp later. It was it's just it's a small fucking circle. Yeah. So uh but that's yeah, I met her somewhere in the chaos of Fremont Street. <laughs> mixing bands on Fremont Street. That shit was great. Yeah. I highly recommend if you're twenty two, twenty three years old to just go get paid in booze and mix bands on Fremont Street. If you could do it, why not? Yeah, I mean <clears throat> I can't do it now. No. No, I have to it stacks you as you get pay. older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you like start getting all these ambitions and goals and like you're like, oh fuck, I'm maybe forty soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I need retirement. Ah yeah. life. What a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. But when are you turning forty? I still got five years, man. I'm thirty I'm thirty five right now. Prime. Really? I didn't know you were that much younger than me. I'm uh, I'm about to be forty three. Oh man. And I never got to celebrate my fortieth. Like, oh really? Uh, no, the uh, the uh, October first uh, shooting happened like right before I turned forty. And oh. I was just like, "Oh, what's the point?" <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> my birthday's not important right now. Fuck it. Oh, so you got a so that means you got a birthday coming up, huh, big guy? Uh, at the end of October. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not too far away, but it's still closer than I want it to be. Like. Being in my 40s already, it's like, I don't feel, I feel like I'm still like a teenager mentally. Yeah. You know? Like, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm responsible and all, but I don't feel like, uh, feel like it's all just going by too quickly. Yeah, it, it, it's hauling ass. It is. And like, every year, your reference of like time uh, relative to a year mm-hmm. is so much bigger. And you're just like, a year goes, but like, remember when summer would fucking take forever you're like i think i'm tired of being on vacation as a kid it's like can we just like do something else this three <laughs> months has seemed like the my entire life mm-hmm. and uh and now it's just like oh summer's over it just started getting hot didn't it yeah and then <laughs> fuck here comes september yeah. i you you will not find me complaining about that i was just talking to my mother about that last night oh before you know it you'll wish it was summer again no no i won't it's it's entirely too hot in Vegas to to want for it to be like this. Like I like no. having the windows open. I I like springtime. I look forward to springtime, but summer, mm. no. Even the, even winter, like dead of winter out here in Vegas is fantastic. Yeah, I, I'll be I can bar when I was working the nightclubs, right? I barbecue in my fucking backyard at like four in the morning after the I get home from fucking running the club all night mm-hmm. in the middle of winter, and it's like it's not even bad. I, I love the climate, but uh, I never had allergies until I moved to Vegas. Dude. And my allergies get real bad come, like, February. I'm just hating life. 
I'm right there with you, man. Like, uh, my allergies kill me in the spring, dude. Like, and I never had allergies before I moved. I think that's a lot of, of, of people. My buddy Ray just got his allergies done. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is like, we never had problems. We grew up in California, no issues. And then Vegas, like right when that wind fucking picks up is the springtime's coming in. Yep. And then it just, everything's pollinating and just getting blasted by the wind. And I think it's just this just dangerous cocktail of like every pollen you can possibly imagine just getting picked up in the air and smashed into your face by like 40 <laughs> mile an hour winds it's kind of ridiculous yeah i do i have to take allergy medicine in the springtime for sure just to leave the house or i'm gonna be every a mess day. and oh, sometimes yeah. you get my body will like get used to it so i gotta go from claritin to zyrtec to uh, allegra you know i got like every kind of allergy medication on the market i gotta stay stocked up on and <laughs> kind of switch daily so that i don't get uh my body doesn't get too used to it and then it just doesn't do anything so it's that's rough fun. yeah that's rough man yeah it happened to um uh, yeah it happens to a lot of people too man i think it happened to my dad as well he was just like, I don't know what's wrong. I just feel like shit. And he was just taking way too much stuff. And then the doctor was like, whoa, man, just stop taking all this shit. Here's one allergy pill. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's just doing, like, the Mucinex and the stomach stuff and, like, this headache stuff. And, like, you know, he's, like, he was de dealing with all the symptoms. But he did, could, couldn't admit because he's, you know, what, 60, 68, turning 69 tomorrow, actually. Wow. And, uh and he couldn't admit that uh, he had allergies because he never had them his whole life. You know, so mm -hmm. that just wasn't clicking until he went to the doctor. And they're like, just take this one fucking allergy pill, man. And stop taking all the <laughs> sinus relief and the fucking, all the junk that you're putting in your body. He was just, it kept making, it was making him worse is what he was doing. Because then he's just getting all the side effects and mixing all this shit together. He was a fucking mess when he first moved out here. It was hilarious. Yeah, I need to go get an allergy test. Uh but I checked into it and it was going to, I'm insured, but it was still going to cost me 2,500 bucks out of pocket. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I'm not paying that. Jeez Louise, man. I'll deal with the headaches and the water coming out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fortunate, man. I, uh, I can just go get the generic, like store brand, whatever allergy pill, antihistamine. Mm. And I'll take that in, in the springtime and I'm all right. Right on. And as long as I do it in the spring, I don't really have problems the rest of the year. So it's just in that spring it fucks me up really bad. It's got to be brutal for you, like the springtime especially. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think we've we've kind of covered allergies. Allergies <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Anybody watching this is like, I can't believe they've been fucking talking about allergies for 20 minutes now. This is some bullshit. Oh, I don't know if it was 20 minutes, but check this out. We got some cool-ass mashup art. The Walkin' Cobra. Yeah, so I, I love mashup art. I've been, you know, trying to uh when it comes to stuff i want to spend my time on i don't i have no interest in painting a guy fishing on a lake around a mountain that just that doesn't speak to me but doing stuff like this where it's mashing up characters heroes or anything like that so i originally painted uh walk-in from uh from his uh famous saturday night live sketch of uh what was he playing bruce dickinson oh like, yeah that's uh, um that's a cowbell, right? Yeah, cowbell. Yeah. So <laughs> he was doing that. So I took the the cowbell photo and I, I put it on top of uh, Stallone Cobra from I think that was like 1985 or 1986 when that movie came out. It's a good year. I was like that. That's kind of a cool concept. I don't know if anybody else would be interested in it, but as far as something going on the wall in my garage, so that's another mashup. Um, I took some some of the original art from Army of Darkness. Uh, where he's got his, his arms up, and uh, I changed it around. I changed the chainsaw. I actually redid his whole right arm, and uh, I gave him the Punisher logo and changed his head around and all. But I thought that was a cool concept because I love Evil Dead and I love the Punisher. So there's probably other people out there that like that shit too. That's a good mashup. I like that one. And that that's a mashup of uh, Baby Yoda and Spike from Gremlins. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. I was trying to figure out what the hell is going on. It's Gremlins. That's perfect, of course, Gremlins. So that's my uh, that's kind of my first uh, actual art piece that I did a month ago, which was a mashup of the Black Flag logo and uh, the album artwork from Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures, which is a popular artwork that you just see everywhere and mashed up with everything. But 
And that is perfect. That's actually a triple mashup between Deadpool, Say Anything, and uh, Transformers. I don't know if too many people would get the. The Transformers kind of uh, almost went over my head. Yeah, I think I should use Soundwave and not Master box. Blaster. Yeah, I think I think Soundwave is more recognizable in the purple and blue. But I was thinking on saving spray paint when I get around to doing that, I could you know use the red. But I think I'm gonna have to change it to Soundwave in order <laughs> for it to to people to really get it. The triple mashup. Uh, there's a mashup of Snoop Dogg and Django and Chain. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fucking send that to his Twitter account, man. He <laughs> love that shit. And that's Mad Max and Bane. I thought that was appropriate since you know they're both what, Tom Hardy. What is it? Uh, so the head is Bane from yeah. um, uh, The Dark Knight Rises, and then the body is from uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, okay, okay. And that's actually on my garage. That's uh, I'm a big Run the Jewels fan, and uh, I'm not like a big fan of Green Lantern, but I was thinking, what, what can I mash them up with? And I was like, well, shit, I think I could pretty easily put a Green Lantern in his hand and then put Green Lantern masks on him. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, that uh, came out good. That kind of... Um, I kind of leveled up with that one, and a lot of the other artwork that was on my wall in the garage, I was like, nope, I'm painting over that, because that shit looks like garbage now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a mashup of uh, Han Solo and Star-Lord. Yeah, that's perfect. They're some kind of, these of stuff, similar personalities. Some of these ideas just come from, uh, I remember reading that Chris Pratt might have gotten the, the job to play Han Solo. You know, he didn't ultimately. Oh, in the I remake? Like, oh, you know, so there we go. Chris Pratt as Han Solo, Star Lord as Han Solo. Uh, he some been some of this stuff's Solo. goofy, you know. Yeah, I think so. I, I wasn't really happy with that, that Solo movie, personally. Yeah. I was really excited about it. I thought um, having Donald Glover play uh, Lando was perfect. Okay, yeah. I, I thought you were going to say that was what you didn't like. I was like, no. Well, I love that dude like he's he's so talented and I thought that was the best part uh one of my friends uh has always been in love with uh Han Solo and uh, I remember going to the movies with her and and they had the commercial for the trailer for Solo and she was like that's not my Solo <laughs> oh <laughs> that's not my Solo I I hate that guy who is that guy anyways I don't think I've seen him in anything else yeah, but he kind of looks like Harrison Ford a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I haven't seen him in anything else that I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they set it up for a second one. It seems like they were going to try to. I don't know if they're going to. I didn't, like, hate it. You know, it just, yeah. uh, I liked I don't know. it. It, like, it was one of those movies where I watched it and it was like, okay, that happened. You know, it yeah. wasn't, wasn't anything that I want to watch again or didn't really have replay value for me, you know. Yeah, freaking, uh, like, I haven't watched, uh, I haven't watched the trilogy ones again either, man. Like, the episode nine, oh, I noticed yeah, yeah. I noticed it was on Disney Plus, and I was just like, nah, I was I don't really care. disappointed with, uh, with episode nine. That's, that's the Rise of Skywalker, right? That's the last one they made? Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't... And I, I, I had a long conversation with somebody about this, and they were telling me that they just didn't have a plan for this trilogy. They kind of left it up to the directors to, to do their own thing. and Which and is terrible. Th it really shows, you know. When, when you watch that trilogy, like, I, I liked uh, Episode 7, uh, you know, just for nostalgic reasons, seeing Han Solo. That's all Episode after, 7 after was, was years, nostalgia, yeah, It was just right? nostalgia. But it... it it hit all the right notes for me personally. You know, I'm not, yeah. I don't overanalyze things. I try to watch stuff just to enjoy it. You know, I'm not a big critic, but, uh, a lot of people hated episode eight. I didn't hate it, but it didn't like really resonate with me. I didn't like, I watched it again. And I was like, yeah, that happened. They were scrambling to put some kind of storyline and, 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 and add, um, what the fuck's the word I'm looking for? Consistency mm -hmm. across the board, right? They were just like, well, we got to make some kind of trilogy out of this piece of shit yeah. that we set up with the with the uh, Happy Days uh, reunion special, yeah. like the South Park guys well, called it. The thing I liked about Episode 8 was the way it ended, it opened up that universe. It was showing you 
uh, you know, you're seeing this kid just sweeping up a mess, but he's using the force with the broom. And it was like, oh, now they're, they're finally showing like the force could like be with anybody really, you know, and it wasn't just centralized around this family. And I think that that franchise desperately has needed to get away from that family, the, the Skywalker, Skywalker family. And it's just like, all right, we're, we're done with that. Let's, let's explore, let's open up this universe and really explore it. Cause if you've played like any of the video games over the years, some of the video games, uh, the force unleashed, that was like the best star Wars story ever. You know? And I was like, I really, I really enjoyed that. I know some people that are really like into the clone wars and stuff like that. And they really get a, was the force unleashed the one where you were Vader's apprentice? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, gotta play I that one that. again. I think it held up too, man. The last time I played it, uh, cause that, that game's probably 10 years old now. Yeah. It's, it's a really old one. Yeah, I'm still. I fucking. You know what I have is the new Jedi Knights one that just came out before the fucking plague hit, and I totally forgot I had that sitting yeah, here until we had I, uh, this conversation. If it's the one I'm thinking about, uh, I played it for a couple days and never went back to it. It. it yeah, that's probably that's what happened to me too, right? I was like, I got into it for a second, and it then, started off cool. It was kind of like. Uh, like the format of it reminded me of the Uncharted video games on PlayStation. Totally. But uh, I was getting the parts that were just ridiculously hard, or I couldn't figure out what to do without consulting YouTube. And then I'm like, well, fuck this. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to lend this game to somebody else that might enjoy it. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, there was some there was some hard parts in that game for sure, man. Mm-hmm. I kind of got lost. I must have picked up another game or something and uh and got distracted off of that one or maybe you've just been doing this i have yeah i have been you know what that's i think what happened yeah. is this <laughs> happened and then i was just like fucking video games who got time for video games when i have all this shit to do yeah so yeah there was actually a point when i logged back on it had been it had been months since i had signed on to my xbox account because mm-hmm. this was happening and it was just like we had finally gotten to the point where we were like Oh, I think we know what we're doing. Like we have a system and we can set this up and tear it down and we can bang the uh, editing process out. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, oh, and there was like this big relief, like around episode 15, 16, I'd say. Mm -hmm. We were finally, um, and then I know by episode 20, we had achieved something else too. But I remember episode 20 was a big deal for us. And we were like, fuck yeah. Like, this is settling. Are you documenting, like, your progress? Like, because I'm wondering where you'll be at episode 100, you know? Like, are you documenting things like, you know, how many people are viewing it by episode 5 as opposed to episode 20? And um, Well, I mean, it is... It's it's there online to see they have like um, statistics and and they do all this analysis of your of your YouTube channel and your mm. podcast and everything like that. So you can go in and see how it's like growing slowly and um, and yeah, it's been consistent. Like the podcast is nice. I really like the whole format because I bring in a new person every week mm. and the new person has friends that aren't watching the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's like hopefully two or three of those people will grab the podcast. And then I'll pay a little money to market, and I usually get a couple people there. And it's like, I aim for like four or five subscribers a week, and it's like it's been on the point on point with that. Sweet. Yeah, you know, not really like getting greedy. Like I want twenty subscribers in a week. Yeah. Um, but then we do have those those weeks. Like we had Jerry Pesh on recently, and he's he does this online um, uh, event called CouchCon where okay. he, he does all this metallic art, and it's fucking awesome. And uh, actually, I'll pull, I'll pull up some. I'll show you some of this. Yeah, art. I want to see. And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me pull up some Jerry Pesh stuff. Anyways, he's doing a couch con, and he like threw up a thing and got us a bunch of subscribers. I just want to say shout out to Jerry Pesh. The dude is amazing, and you should definitely get some of his art because it is freaking awesome. Hang on a second. Let the page load. There it is. It loaded. So here's some of the specials he's got going on right now, too. The Crash Bandicoot. Tight. So uh, he does all kinds of, like, uh, video games. So it's on a metal sheet, right? And it shines hella nice. That's rad. And uh, where's the thing at? It's not scrolling. Let me find something else cool that I like. 
But um, I like some of the other shit that he has where uh, I got like a Rick and Morty piece from him. I got a Jason piece from him. I got a Mars Attacks piece from him. And uh, so he was used to go out and do all the conventions that we that we set up. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he'd just have a booth and he'd be fucking selling art like crazy. And then, uh, you know, the thing, the fucking COVID happened and he started doing this online show. These are all signed. Let me go to his Insta. So that was something I wanted to ask you. <clears throat> was podcasting an interest you had before the pandemic or was this something that you were like, yeah, I'll do this? Oh, uh, yeah, no, the podcasting was, uh, like the podcasting and I want to do the stand up comedy thing, right? Like I want to go talk on stage and tell stories and Mm -hmm. like get paid for it because that's essentially what, you know, like for me anyways, when I'm looking for a comedian, Mm -hmm. I want someone who's going to, who's going to tell me a story, who's going to capture my attention and then like, uh, you know, play with me a bit, right? We're going to fuck my mind up a little bit, right? Instead of just like, some guys will go up there and just be, you know, they'll just be like, knock, knock. I'm going to tell you a joke and then I'm going to tell you another joke and then I'm going to tell you another joke. And, uh, and like in studying comedy and like kind of like absorbing that information, I realized that I didn't really like that very much. Like, um, although some people do it well, like Jimmy Carr's a fantastic example of it. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Carr is this British guy who's just like, joke 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 and he just goes out and memorizes a fuckload of jokes and he Mm. just and he's super polished his timing's impeccable and he just nails it every time right or like uh mitch hedberg Mm -hmm. just go out and say random shit for however long his set is and Mm -hmm. so but um but a lot of the greats you know like george carlin and now like some of the bigger guys out there like kevin hart and uh joe rogan i don't know who they he's really it, I, uh, i've Daniel always Tosh, they're all up there telling you a story yeah and then throwing punchlines into the story and like hooking it and i love that i've always really loved henry rollins uh he doesn't really coin himself as a comedian but Definitely. he really is you know he yeah he coins himself as oh this is straight talk or uh, speaking performance, but, uh, and sometimes, you know, some, some of his content can be a little bit serious, but 95% of it is funny stories that he's telling. And, you know, that dude's just been everywhere multiple times. Like, uh, and that's, that's what he likes to talk about. Like, okay, that place sucks. I'm going there. I'm going to experience <laughs> that for myself. And I'm going to tell people about the suck, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what I want to do, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to go out. And so we have this whole road kit to go shoot. Like I was saying, we're going to shoot yoga videos out there, but we're also going to shoot all this other shit where we're going to take trips. Um, we're getting on a plane and flying to uh, Arkansas in mm-hmm. a little while to go take, like, star p- pictures and nature pictures as the leaves turn. Right on. And we're going to do all kinds of time-lapse stuff. And, like, we're just going to play with photography. And um, But I'm... I'm also interested in doing these other adventures where I'll be going out and uh, and also filming it, putting it on the podcast, and like talk about it on stage and like I don't know. There's there's so many people out there that I see doing that. Mm-hmm. That's their life. They they tell jokes and they talk to their friends on a podcast, and they're making pretty solid money, better money than I was making engineering, right? Right on. And you still get to travel and still get to tour, and uh. And it's not like I wouldn't still be an audio engineer because I fucking love audio engineering. Yeah. But it's just this whole thing. I, w- I was watching all these people do it, and I'm like, I could fucking do that. Mm-hmm. I could get in. I could. I could set up a thing and get in front of a camera and talk and hang out with my friends and go on stage and and tell jokes. Like I have no fucking problem getting on stage and talking into microphones. I've always been able to fucking go up and do it. And I can talk forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, no, I got some great stories lined up though for the for the stand up, which is going to be fun. That's been really one of the. I'm like, I really want to go do that. Mm. I'm I'm dying to go do that shit, and I'm glad that it didn't um, that I wasn't able to dive at it because I was able to evolve in a in a closet, you know, just hanging out and I'm like telling Angela jokes, and figuring out how I how I want to command five minutes of time or ten minutes of time, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I turned into like this, I was writing jokes and like, <laughs> and then I realized what I was doing after watching a million fucking stand-up comedy specials. Mm-hmm. When are you going to have uh, Brandon White on? I feel like that would be an episode that I, I could watch you guys talk to each other for five hours and 
share stories. That's a great point. I'm going to write that on this sheet so I don't forget. But uh, And that motherfucker is super talkative. It's hard to get in a word with him. That might be why you haven't had him on yet. <laughs> no, I love that. I absolutely love when my guests can come on and just overtalk me mm-hmm. and let me just kick back and go, yeah, cool. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, like, fucking, I'll take the free, I'll take the free podcast from you. You know, you got a lot to say, fucking say it. Uh, cause I mean, a lot of the stuff that I say always is getting recycled. I can't mm-hmm. talk, to, uh, for this, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting close to about 50 hours now yeah. of my dumb ass being recorded on camera talking and, and filling dead air. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I've definitely been repeating myself. I'm, I'm sure of it, but I've been reading a lot of books right? and I've been, uh, trying to like fill my brain with interesting shit to say mm-hmm. and, and trying to open my mind to a very like centrist, uh, not hard leaning in any direction view of the world, mm-hmm. um, because that kind of shit can get you in all kinds of areas you don't want to be in, Absolutely. especially politically. And it's like mm-hmm. I don't want to get involved with that fucking nightmare. Yeah, and I have opinions about it, and if someone starts talking about it, I'll fucking throw my opinion around a little bit. But for the most part, it's a loving like we should all be taking care of each other kind of opinion. Yeah. But I also like the economy to be healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Both things should be important. Yeah, I've been trying to uh, really limit my uh, <clears throat> my Facebook usage because it really, you get on there the first thing in the morning, that could really determine how your day goes, you know? Like oh, yeah. You just, you just read a bunch of depressing news, and that's... Don't do that's, it. It's awful that that's where I get my news from is Facebook, but... What's well, a place where you find out like the hot things and then you can go search it out, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I go on there for cat videos and then, you know, I, I have to read about all the awful shit going on in, in our country and in the world. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I've been, I'll see, see something somebody's posted that I just vehemently disagree with and I'm getting better at at not taking that bait. You yeah. Know? I'm, that's like, I'm not going to change their mind. They're not going to change my mind. They're it's pissed off and they want to fight with someone. Yeah. I, like, so I'm trying to get better at like, all right, put the phone down, go into the garage and paint something, you know, like, hell yeah. Utilize this time as a blessing. And, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully be proud of something you did rather than arguing with people on fucking Facebook. It's, it's pointless. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I've, I've gotten off of it, man. Like I only post and I don't even like Angela's fucking yelling at me today. She's like, you need to go on and fucking like some (laughs) shit and do some stuff. I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm on hiatus from that thing, man. Like that thing bums me out. I don't like my phone. I keep it upstairs. Mm -hmm. I like keep it away from me. Um, I don't look at it until noon. Like I have this whole routine in the morning where I'm exercising and reading and meditating and, and Mm -hmm. I make a nice breakfast. I ate my breakfast and then I go, what the fuck is the world going to do to me today? Right. And I mm-hmm. open it up and I, then I deal with it after like everything's balanced, you know, my fucking workouts got my hormones right. And my fucking mm-hmm. meditation's got my mind straight. And like, I got a belly full of fucking clean food and it's like, let's deal with problems now. And, uh, and sometimes I open it up and there's nothing there. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing ever. And mm-hmm. it used to be the opposite, right? I used right. to be, Oh, nobody's sent me anything. Mm. Um, And I've really been trying to get to the point where it's like, I don't need anybody to send me anything. I don't want anybody to send me anything. I don't want any new information. I want to, I'm just like trying to let that, it's an addiction. It's like this obsession. I was always looking at my phone. I have this thing in my hip, right? My phone sits in my right pocket Mm. and there's a muscle there and it'll fucking vibrate. And I, it happens Every once in a while, right? And it's like, oh, is that my phone? It's like, no, your phone's upstairs, but you still have ghost phone in your pocket because you're, like, obsessed with it and you're thinking about it all the time. It's this nasty addiction. I was getting uh, this this bad pain, like, in my hip. I used to wear my – or put keep my phone in my right pocket, and I would only notice it at work. And it was like we'd be getting up to go to our lunch break or something. I'd stand up, and I just couldn't walk right for, like – you know, 50 feet until like things finally settled. And I finally realized I wasn't getting that pain. If I was at home, what was I doing differently? You know, it wasn't, it couldn't just be, 
banquet chairs I was sitting in. It had to be. So I did a little research, and it was my cell phone. And so now I, I wear it in my back pocket. I don't yeah. have that hip pain anymore. But, you know, I really try to limit how much this this fucking thing is sitting on my body. You know, that's... Dude, it sucks. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it's a big brick sitting in your pocket that mm-hmm. is awkward and, like, it doesn't sit right in your pants, man. And then it's, yeah. like, fucking all kinds of power and signals coming in and out of it all the time. Who knows the... We don't know what that's doing. Yeah. You know, the I negative mean, effects it's having on our bodies. Yeah. I remember reading about that, um, like, middle school science experiment that these these uh, little girls did. Uh-huh. And it was about, they uh, took a bowl of rice and they set it out, like... In their kitchen, they took another bowl and they set it right next to their internet router. And the bowl that was sitting next to their internet router uh, became black in like a day. And the, the one that was sitting in the kitchen was looked healthy and delicious like for a week later. So, yeah. I'll try that out. <laughs> I'll go put one have, next to my router. I have no idea what, what all this stuff and it's like I need it, man. I need my Netflix and I'm, I'm kind of a media junkie, you know, when I, when I give myself time to be. Yeah, it can. Uh, that's another one we've been fucking with, man. Is uh, not turning the TV on until the sun's going down, and like after six o'clock, mm-hmm. like do something else with your time. Because we were we were super, like, first thing in the morning, like zombies. We'd wake up, turn that TV on, and we don't even know why, but we're looking for something to fucking watch. Mm-hmm. And it's like, <clears throat> don't do it. Like, just leave that alone. And like, and then we just like. Like let the the silence be for a little while, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's not even a big deal to like not have the TV on. It was just it's this it's these breaking of the, the breaking of these hypnotic suggestions and these subconscious behaviors, like I was saying earlier, that we've been I've been really focusing on in my my world, man. Because I was I fucking go I turn it on first thing in the morning and I watch all day long until I have to have it on to go to sleep. It's like I need it. Like I yeah. need that sound. I don't really turn it on until like dinner time. Oh, see, you nice. know, that's that's usually when, and nine times out of ten, I can't make the decision on what to watch. So yeah. we usually just put on Letter Kenny and watch it for the twelfth time. You know, I'm I'm not complaining. <laughs> Love that show. Yeah, that show's fantastic. Uh, those guys are amazing writers. Mm. I love when they just spit shit off as fast as they can, or they do the alphabet in the beginning of the show. Yeah. You gotta watch it with the subtitles. Oh, you have to, yeah. <laughs> you you catch to. catch everything. Yeah. Which has really got me to I keep the subtitles on for everything now and now I don't Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh too many of my friends you try to watch something with and they talk the entire time, you know. And so I try to tune them out and pay attention to the subtitles so I know what's going on. And then I don't get pissed off either. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear shit. Um, like from being an audio engineer and like I don't want to crank the TV up to where it's like oh I can totally tell what's going on because now we're in the theater you know mm-hmm. now it's like and I can feel it it's like I don't have to fucking have the TV up that loud so I'm always subtitles guy I love it but and then you watch uh, anime and then like just automatically it's like yeah of course the subtitles are always on so it doesn't mm-hmm. even bother me anymore not that it really ever did I mean I watched all 350 episodes of Bleach with subtitles in Japanese. <laughs> Damn. It's the only way to watch it. Mm-hmm. I love my subtitles, man. They are nice. They are nice. I think I have another set of pictures that you did here. Let's pull that shit up. So this is the... Uh, there's a wall. That's uh, what my garage mural is looking like now. So I think I was talking about earlier, after I did um, Run the Lanterns, I kind of uh, leveled up a bit. And so I went back and and just painted white over all the other characters on the wall. Oh, I think, yeah, here's the other character you were saying. Yeah. Here's your letter, Kenny Wolverine, I love. And so those are all supposed to be mashups. Uh, I hadn't, so up in the left-hand corner, upper left-hand, is Shaun of the Dead. But I Who? was... Uh, Simon Pegg's Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. So that's that's an image from that, but I, I had yet to mash him up. I was going to turn the bat into Negan's bat from uh, The Walking Dead, so he'd be properly mashed up. Oh, okay. Uh, Army of Darkness, Ash there, He's he's got the Punisher logo on his chest like the other one. And then below him is uh, Wayne from Letter Kenny, and I changed him up to make him Wolverine, which I was kind of trying to start... Uh, 
somebody else actually had started a petition to to have Jared Kiso, uh, you know, basically in line to play for that role. And that'd be awesome. And so I put that artwork up on social media on Letterkenny fan site. And some people love it. Some people hate it. Uh, I, I had I had never put up something that got so many comments, and like it seemed like half of them people didn't get it because mm-hmm. uh, I guess they weren't into X Men or Wolverine, and so I'd explain it to them, and they still wouldn't get it, you know, and and because the the artwork that I posted had um, I put uh, I changed the saying around a little bit. So on on Letter Kenny uh, Wayne says uh, your spare parts aren't your bud. Yeah. And so for the mashup, I put your spare parts, aren't you, bub? Of course. Because Wolverine says bub. And so you got people like, oh, he, it's bud, not bub. <laughs> like, oh, fuck, you don't get it. And so I'd post pictures of Wolverine uh, saying that. He's got freaking Wolverine it. claws. And then there's people arguing, well, he's too tall. Well, he's actually like three inches shorter than you, Jackman. And, you know, we, we've got special effects. They could... They can make, you know, the the Hobbits in the Lord of the Rings movies weren't really three feet tall. Gandalf wasn't really ten feet tall. You know, they could scale people up. They could fix that. Well, he's too chubby. And then, like, well, then you, you post a picture where he's actually got a six six pack abs and he's, like, he's, he's got a good build. He's freaking ripped. Yeah, he's ripped. He's, really? He's too chubby here? Seriously? No. He's, what's his name in he's the... He's Canadian. Um, he's fucking perfect to play Wolverine. The hockey team, in my right? Opinion. Shorzy. He's yeah, Shorzy, yeah, right? He's also you never Shorzy. see his face, but yeah. you always see him from behind. He's always mm. working out, doing some ridiculous posture. The dude's yeah. fucking jacked. Yeah. Personally, I think he'd make an awesome Wolverine. I'd love to see that. Oh, let me push that button again. Bam! Push that button again. So yeah, there's him. Uh, oh. Mashed up uh, Captain America with Watchmen. Kind of made him Captain Watchmen. That shit's tight. Uh, Samuel Jackson. I gave him a Men in Black gun, so he's mashed up, and then. Uh, to the right of Samuel Jackson, I've got Henry Rollins. And originally that was a stencil that somebody else had posted online that I kind of stole. And I just put the uh, the Joy Division Unknown Pleasures on the background of the black flag there. And then up above him is Bruce Lee. And I forget the name of the necklace, but I was basically turning Bruce Lee into Doctor Strange. And I hadn't, oh, okay. I hadn't finished that yet. But yeah, after after I did run the lanterns i was like i could do better I, i'm still interested in those ideas but and then you were like boom but yeah i could do them better yeah only the good stuff i wish i could do that with my tattoos <laughs> <laughs> well you uh, could probably get uh what what tattoos do you have that you don't like no i love all my tattoos man i'm just joking uh, i just i when i was a kid right i always I, I ran out and got as many as i freaking could real mm. fast and we made a tattoo gun and started tattooing each other and yeah, we did a bunch of dumb shit, but yeah. they're all memories now, right? They're yeah. All, uh, well, I, some people, I think they just, I don't know. I, I take tattoos very seriously. Like, that's something I don't just jump into. I put a lot of thought in it. Like, this is going to be on my body for the rest of my life. And I, uh, years ago, I dated some girl that every Friday the 13th, she would just go and get as many $13 tattoos, and she's just covered in them. And I'm like, do <laughs> these do these mean anything to you? <laughs> no. I'm like, that's on your body forever. Like I'm, it's cool. Like I'm all about bargains, but if you're gonna put something on your body for the rest of life, for the rest of your life, it should mean something to you. You know, it's not just yeah. like, oh, it just cost me thirteen bucks. Look at that. It's it's a fucking scorpion. Are you a Scorpio? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. Like um, yeah, all my tattoos are done by friends. Like uh, everybody I know who did every single piece personally, and like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's a important part of it to that's me awesome. as well. And then, but I always have um, like when I first got a couple tattoos, uh, and I was just like, oh, it didn't come out the way I thought it was going to come out. It was like one of the things uh, where you realize that art is like a translation through a human body. You like take a picture, and then it translates through this person onto your skin, and it becomes mm. a piece of art. It's not a stamp. Yeah, and it's like that's what art is, dummy. Like it's this translation through the the human body, and uh, and so I stopped picking my pieces until day of. I was mm. like, I had an idea of what I want, right? Or like, uh, like, uh, like on my back, I have this this kiss piece. My buddy wanted to do a bunch of portraits, mm-hmm. and so I, I he's doing it all on my back, and we actually we we finished the fucking piece, 
uh, at least all four faces. But we don't pick the face out until the day of the tattoo. Mm -hmm. And what, the thing we find that day that works, you know, it's all like 70s uh, kiss. It's not the new looking kisses. They all look, they, it's great. I love it. Uh, Are they but, still around? Fuck yeah. I thought I thought I read years ago that Gene Simmons passed away. Is he still? No, he's still kicking. Gene's still. Gene's immortal. Good for he's him. He's a demon. He can't die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's got so much friggin' money. I'm sure he's got. He's doing all kinds of great, uh, crazy Mel Gibson shit to keep himself alive longer. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, they're still alive. They're still technically on tour Wait, right what, now. What is crazy Mel Gibson shit to keep yourself alive? Oh, uh, no, he goes to, like, Mexico with his dad, and he gets all this uh, stem cell injections. Done. Oh. Right. Yeah, to, like, keep his body young because uh, you can't really do... I mean, you can, but not the way he does it, I guess, mm. or something. Or maybe it's just cheaper in Mexico. I don't know why he goes to Mexico. I anymore. think everything's cheaper. Probably the laws, the laws are starting to change, but not fast enough for mm. that kind of stuff to where it's, like, he wants to stay alive longer. It works. I mean, it's it's fresh cells I, that create cells for you. If I knew how to do it, you. I could I could afford it. I would totally do it. I know uh, the first time I'd ever heard about that, Joe Rogan was talking about he got a stem cell shot. He had an old shoulder injury, yeah, and he got a stem cell shot. And it was like forty five minutes later, his shoulder felt like it was brand new. Like I'm like yeah, I want that. You know? I'm I'm saving up to do. Well, I was saving up, not anymore. But I mean, I'm gonna start saving again. <laughs> from when I when I hit forty, I'm doing both my knees and my shoulder. Um, and like both my knees are like, I got it quoted at seven grand to do it. Um, so, but it's just not to get a shot. Yeah. Uh, so what they do is they, um, they take your blood and then they run it through some kind of process that I don't know. Cause I'm not a scientist. And then it turns into, um, uh, basically what stem cells are, you know, mm -hmm. they're like fresh cells ready to turn into whatever you need them to be. And, uh, and they inject those back in you. It's your own DNA. It's your own stem cells that got, you know, so they, so the, do the whole procedure is the doctor comes and takes your blood. Mm -hmm. They send it to a lab. You come back a little bit later, like a week or whatever. And, uh, and they fucking smash the, the stuff into your knees or your shoulder or whatever you want, you know? And it's like, you know, multiple injections around the site. And I, I was quoted at like thirty five hundred a knee, because um, those are definitely getting done. Mm -hmm. You know, get some fresh shocks going, baby, for the second half. Um, but it's just beautiful that we live in a time where that's like a, just a reality now. Yeah, that's just a that's a thing you can do for yourself. And honestly, seven grand isn't that much money compared to knee pain and like having knee or surgery done in your early fifties. Yeah. Yeah, I've known people with that shit. That's rough, man. And it's like all they, uh, all you're doing is like get ready for the downward spiral into pain pills. Yeah. Because your knees are going to just start. These things are just going to grind together, and it's like, ugh, it's rough. Mm -hmm. It is rough, man. Getting old sucks. That I'm does. trying not to do it. I'm trying not to do it. My my latest adventure in uh, getting older is uh, ear hair. Oh, I do. Me too. What what is up with that? Like I had like a an inch and a half long hair I saw in the mirror and I went to pull it and I was like, ow! And it was it's in my goddamn ear canal <laughs> and I can't tweeze it. I like need professional help to 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 get that job done. Uh, Not fun. I, I don't like that shit. Yeah, I got a little uh I got a little ear trimmer thingy now mm -hmm. that, that that combs all the ear hair off my fucking hair or my <laughs> ear because it's like what now that happens all the time <laughs> it's good like, times it's like i'm turning into the uh the grandpa from fucking look who's talking faster <laughs> and faster just bushes of hair growing out of everywhere on me man so, i try to keep it tight i try to keep it tight who was the grandpa and look who's talking oh that was it's not a totally obscure reference, but it's been so long since I've watched those movies. It was just one of the things that happened when the kid meets. It, he was a classic actor too, but he was pretty old. But uh, so but like his Columbo or somebody. I don't remember. <laughs> it, but his fucking he just had the, the craziest fucking eyebrows, and uh, and the and like fucking nose hair and ears hair ear mm -hmm. hair, and the kid reaches up and just starts grabbing his like face hair. Not like he's not like a beard. It's like grab a nose hair and hang yeah. on to it. <laughs> and it's just like I don't know. It's one of those things that was always burnt into my brain. The way we think, right? Like these memories, and it's like mm -hmm. that uh, that memory of that movie when I was a kid watching 
this dude with the craziest <laughs> fucking facial hair. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen to me, is it? And then here it's begun. <laughs> oh, I'm not a kid anymore, man. Not even close. No. Not even close. So, yeah. And I've been trying to trying to focus on uh, on not being a kid anymore. Like trying to be more of a, an adult and just like go through life like... There is this uh, appalling revelation, you know, like when you're uh, when you're in it. Uh, at, is all my life just washing dishes, and taking a shower, and doing laundry, and cooking food, and then cooking food, and cooking food, and mm-hmm. exercising, going to work, and it's like, yeah, man, <laughs> that is your fucking life. You mm-hmm. know, it's like uh, enjoy it. Like you got to start learning how to enjoy doing the dishes. Because you're gonna do them every day, uh, yeah. and it's- well, I, I uh, since I've been trying to spend my time uh, with artistic endeavors, um, been spending a lot of time cutting stencils, and I was talking to my cousin. My cousin is a super talented artist out of Orlando, and I saw his process, and I'm kind of piggybacking on that a little bit. But I spent an entire day cutting out this like one stencil, and I knew I had like four more to do. And I was just really feeling discouraged with it all. And I called him up. I was like, I don't know how you do this, man. Like, I I just cut stencils for 10 hours straight. And every second of it, uh, the thought in my brain is, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't think I could do this. Like, this sucks. And he told me, he gave me a great piece of advice. He said, "Um, just focus on your breathing. Yeah. He's like, that's it. Focus on your breathing. Don't, Don't think about how much you have left to do. Just focus on your breathing and it'll all go by. And so the next day I got back to stenciling and I was just focusing on my breathing. And it was, he was absolutely right. You know, I was like, I wasn't sitting there going, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. I can't do this. This sucks. So. Yeah. That internal monologue, man, that'll that'll get you every time. Yeah. Yeah. So I I guess that could be applied to doing dishes. It'd be applied to doing everything, man. I've even been going back through, um, on my recall, right? Where, um, like Angela put on a high school movie and I go, fucking high school sucked. I hated (laughs) high school. I don't want to watch this high school movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I go, you're not allowed to say that anymore. High school didn't suck. High school was great. Your life was awesome. Like Mm -hmm. don't make all your memories, these negative fucking memories, man. Like, and then all your recall is all this negative recall. And Mm. then you're fucking with your hormones because you're, everything you recall sucked. Everything sucked. My whole life sucked. And it's just like, you're not allowed to say that anymore. You're not allowed to say shit sucks. You're not allowed to say you hate stuff. And, uh, are you saying in general or these are just rules, rules I have for myself. Okay. These are rules that I've been doing. It's this, it's just games I play with my, Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, make my reality this happy place man because yeah. it got real dark and uh it was my own fucking fault because <laughs> i'm just going around hating on everything and being negative about shit and yeah. always finding out what's wrong with something so looking at what's awesome about it and it's really easy to do mm-hmm. and you can it's it just takes you in this downward spiral and i've been really focusing on not letting myself do that internally or externally or like if i say i hate something i go no i don't yeah. You know, like it'll come out just like the fucks come out, right? Like it's just like um I'm not programmed that way. It's the you, you, knowing the path and walking the path, right? Mm-hmm. Two completely different things. And walking the path is what I'm trying to accomplish, which is you stumble yeah. and and you get back up and go, "We don't say that." Yeah. And but but I but the benefit is this beautiful world that's opening up. Well, also I think uh with that kind of keeping that frame of mind going it's it has a positive effect on other people too because they're not pissing in somebody's ear you know yeah like, so i noticed like way back in high school um people would tell me oh i hate that band or whatever you know and it's like that's well that's your opinion and i'm not gonna allow, allow you to make me feel bad because i do like them but that's something that i still see going on all the time you know oh they suck they say well that's your opinion but to me, like, instead of shitting on other people's opinions, I just say, you know what? We all operate on and respond to our own set of frequencies, and that's what makes us individuals, and we should celebrate that instead of saying, 
you know, trying to put somebody down because they like something that you don't like, you know, say, yeah, good for you. I'm glad you found that. I'm glad that you like music at all. You know, I, I love music and, and, you know, we may not like the same music and I love turning people on to music. So that's some, that's something that, um, you know, I might get a little bit butthurt about like, oh, I think you're going to really like this band. You're like, no, I don't like them at all. <laughs> like, oh, I failed. Shit. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I, I've got a, a, one of my best friends, he's a filmmaker, and uh, he could just go on and on about how awful some movie was. And I'm like, you know, this is an industry you work in. Yeah. I think your time would be better spent in looking for something you liked about it. You know, it could be the costume design. You know, have something good to say about somebody else's art you know instead of just shitting on it all the time that's all anybody has to, you know, yeah they, they have to shit all it's over so it. easy just to say you know it wasn't my cup of tea yeah. it wasn't for me instead of you know just shitting all over somebody else's opinion you know it's like and it, and in some ways kind of invalidating somebody's opinion you know and that's that's where i get bothered yeah I agree with that entirely. It's like, um, what is it, the Marvel Universe. And people go, those, oh, but they could have done so much better on this Marvel movie or that Marvel movie. Yeah. It's like, dude, they gave you nine days of live-action comic books, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you're bitching about it? Like, they fucking brought you fucking Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and yeah. it's like, not good enough. You know, I was like, what do you want them to do? What do you want from them? And I, and, and I they, highly recommend uh, on YouTube, there's a, a group called New Rockstars, and they do uh, these film breakdowns of all the Marvel movies. Yeah. And the things that they point out are fascinating, and you you see the from them pointing all these these little details out like just how much thought goes into each one of these movies before oh, they even time. produce it and how each one of these movies um connects to one another and you know it could be that uh like they, they've got that movie that they're working on right now shaolin uh, i think it's shaolin yeah, i don't know something like that the Shao... it's it's a new um it's a new character that they're introducing but it calls back to 23 movies ago to the first Iron Man where they got those where he's being <laughs> held like at the, the like right before Iron Man the, the the logo comes on screen you see him he's been captured by like terrorists and there's all these rings in the background yeah and it's calling back to that the the group of um, the ten rings or whatever and it's oh, like, okay but it's just awesome how they built uh, this universe and this this multiverse and I just can't wait for more of it dude and the consistency Mm. Like they, uh, they, they are really meticulous about making sure that everything lines up and everything is proper across the fucking universe, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've been, we've been doing the Avengers saga. We're on the last two Avengers movies. Right we've on. been saving them. We just watched so much shit. And now these two movies have so much more meaning to them, right? Because every single thing that's happening, it's, it's, it's this direct relation that's going on to all these other movies that we just watched. Yeah. Um, like the fucking, uh, what was it? Uh, see, I did it right there. The fucking, fucking, yeah, let me pause real quick and swear for no reason. <laughs> uh, no, um, Captain America, the Captain mm. America movies. I, I didn't get into them so much and then I didn't watch a couple of them. Mm. And then uh, doing this, you know, we watched everything as it said to watch. And then the websites, they show you exactly how to watch it in chronological order. Yeah. And it's great. It's yeah. fantastic. And during the COVID, what a, what a better time to watch nine days solid of movies. If you watch it from beginning to end, straight mm -hmm. nine days without stopping. Um, and now, uh, how, how many hours a day are you designating to that? No, Is we that just one movie a day. No, it was just it yeah. One day, it was like a movie a day, and then we like watched Shield. Three like three or twenty four movies. Yeah, I never watched. Uh, I guess like the last two seasons of Shield. I, I kind of got. Yeah. It kind of started to feel like work watching that show. I don't know. It was always work watching that show. <laughs> um, it was okay, right? And it had some something to do with the Avengers series, but it's like but you only got to really. watch the first yeah. four seasons to get through Avengers if you if you do it in chronological order. And and all it really offers is like um, maybe at the at the end of the second Thor movie, right? Like they're cleaning up Thor's mess, and that's yeah. how the season starts. Is like they're cleaning up Thor's mess, and he's like, "Oh man, gods are always leaving." their shit everywhere yeah. <laughs> and it's like oh ha 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 because i just watched that movie yeah and then that's it and then it's just shield 
right? Yeah. Um, but no, but there is all the Hydra and all the stuff that happens with Hydra and Shield going up and down. And I guess no, you you'd really do have to watch it to understand everything that they're talking about. Yeah, but like from Kevin Feige's mouth, that's not like actual official canon in the MCU. You know, like uh, I think I was like after the first season, they were like, "No, you guys just do your own thing." Oh. And so I think the the people involved in Shield were trying to you know keep it keep the events from the movies in their world, but the filmmakers weren't you know tying the they, films they didn't to give the a Shield. shit about Shield and what happened on that that TV show. Oh, and so well, Shield definitely did a good job on their own. Then uh, yeah. I give them more props for it because they really <laughs> they really tied it together. You know, a lot of the stuff that was happening. Uh, with the internal struggle of like Hydra and Shield and everything getting torn down with Shield, and um, they really got into the details of all that, which was cool. Right on. I thought that was cool, but it's like friggin' twenty two episodes a season. Yeah. Right. So you're talking about eighty eight episodes of forty five minutes mm. a piece, and oh my god, man, we got through them. But we were like, that was when we were just like, oh, we got video editing to do. Put shield on. <laughs> let it run. You know, oh, did you miss that? You had to go take a shower. Don't rewind it, babe. Just let's get this thing out of the way. <laughs> Tell me what happened. <laughs> uh, you know, because it's oh, man, it was long. 22 episodes of seasons a yeah. lot. And I was really glad to finish it. But the end of season four was tight. Yeah. I was stoked about the end of season four. Because that's a uh, spoiler alert. It's been fucking forever. Was that Ghost when they Rider. were in space? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I did yeah, watch that. Yeah, that's when Ghost Rider comes back and the end of the whole, like, AI robotics thing that was going on. I wasn't really... But Ghost Rider. I wasn't really I impressed about. with the, the special effects that they used for Ghost Rider, though, yeah. in, in the, the show. It was all right, you it know? Looked, it looked very, you know, it looked kind of like some kind of cheesy, cheap... C, uh, CG, yeah. like. it's TV show CGI. It is, yeah, yeah. It's like they have less budget. They they can't lock a bunch of people in a room for fucking twenty hours at a time and just be like, make it fucking happen. I don't care. It's gotta look real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love those at the end, dude, of the fucking Marvel movies, the CGI <clears throat> animators lists. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> you see how many people are on there? It's insane. It's just an army of people, and they're just mm. fucking, you know, those guys, like, if, uh, they log, like, huge days like we do, man. Like, they just do, they're doing 12, 16-hour days, just nonstop CGI behind a computer, man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, it's brutal. I would not want, that, that's more power to them, man. Like, I would not want that job at all, but they love it, obviously, and mm. they wouldn't be doing it. It's interesting to see, like, if you go back and watch the first Captain America, when that came out, um... And they were turning Chris Evans into, you know, before he got the, the superpowers and making him look like a scrawny kid. When it came out, it looked so realistic. But now, like, I recently watched it in 4K and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it doesn't look that great. You know, it's still an amazing movie. I, I love it. It kind of reminds me of, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something like that. But, but you uh, can tell it's CGI in 4K. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the rough part about the 4K <laughs> stuff, man. It shows shows all the details and all your little mistakes, man. Mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, I'm run, I'm still rocking 1080p in the house. I haven't gotten the 4K TVs yet. I wish some of the main, only for video games. That's like the only reason I want it is yeah. uh, some of the newer video games are finally pumping out 4K titles instead of just like uh, what's it called? Do you, you you just pump up the fucking uh, bit rate or the mm -hmm. resolution uh, through the output to like 2K? And it's like still a 1080p game, but it like looks a little shinier. Yeah. But like so the games are coming out, like Gears of War, Gears of War, that whole series I think is 4K now, and then uh, God and, and God of War for PlayStation mm -hmm. was uh, that was a 4K game as well, I believe. Yeah, that was a great game. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was. I can't wait for the next one. That's gonna be really good. Right on. And did you get, did you get to play uh, the new Final Fantasy VII remake? No, I uh, I never really gave the Final Fantasy games a, a chance. I remember what? I remember playing the first one back on like I think like Sega Master System. Oh, you're so I missing think. out, bro. Why well, did I just didn't like the the fighting system where you like all right I hit you and now I gotta wait for you to hit me and then I hit you and then I, like I don't like that shit. Like I yeah. like I like just let's well, battle it out. Well, so you'll you like know? the newer ones. They got rid of all that. Oh, okay. They um there's still it, there's still an element of it right where it's like uh. Uh, you, you power up, you're like swinging and tagging and you're powering up your moves and you get to, but 
it's all live action based and you're like maneuvering your character around you have control over your character uh to like dodge shit and mm -hmm. and charge up your move and then fire it and the other guys are kind of like running autopilot um but i definitely like the um what's it the final fantasy 7 remake is mm -hmm. way better than the final fantasy 15 which is where they brought that really into play where everything's live action and they're they're doing that but uh, both of those games are fucking tight yeah. but they only gave you the first first world of Final Fantasy 7 which drove me nuts I didn't know that I didn't I didn't read any, any anything mm. about it and I like I like isolated myself from all information and I was just like fucking ready to dive back into one of the greatest games of all time and then they they only let you get through Midgar which is like the beginning of the game oh right. but they're like that took us forever I mean mm. you saw how big Midgar was right and I was like yeah it was really big <laughs> it was super awesome it's like but you know just make like 25 times more stuff than that mm -hmm. at the same resolution <laughs> with the same quality <laughs> I want it the next summer oh uh, good luck with that I know right <laughs> yeah it was tight it was a fun game for sure yeah, I've been trying to, like, not play video games since this pandemic hit, but uh, I was pretty excited about the, the Avengers game. They just released the beta, like, two weeks ago. Oh, did they? But I've been able to get on there twice and play it. Um, I think there's, I think their servers can't handle it. Yeah. Because every time I try to sign on, it's like, no, nah, the servers are down, sorry. So, and what I've gotten to play of it so far, it's not, it's not that great. Like, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to it. Because like, you get to play all the different... You get to play as Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, Black Widow, and... Um, not Captain Marvel, but I don't know. Marvel Girl or something like that. Miss Marvel? Miss Marvel, thank yeah, you. Yeah, she's one of the new movies. <clears throat> and she's actually fun to play. She's she's uh, like the strongest one. Yeah. But, like, she, uh, in the video game, the story of the video game, I guess there was an event, and she got her powers based off the event. Kind of like the Terra Genesis and S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. So it was something like that that I think caused it. But uh, they Bro, only you show you, me like... to remember the Terra Genesis name right now without, <laughs> like, telling me for it. No I'm way I would have pulled that, that out. It, uh, I'm impressed I just pulled that out of my ass. I am, too, dude. Kudos <clears> for that. <throat> what were you saying? Sorry, I was talking over you. Um, it, well, so far from that game, it's like uh, they only show you so much of the story because it's beta. I guess they don't want to give it all away. So the, the story part seemed pretty fun. And now I'm like at this, the last time I played it, you're at like this war table and you get to choose these missions, but they don't really seem like missions. It's like you go to this place that's kind of confined and you battle a bunch of robots and you're like, all right, good mission. Like that wasn't, there was no story to it. It was just this thing you did and it loses its novelty pretty quickly. Yeah. Sort of like the same kind of overhead Baldur's Gate kind of view Diablo kind of thing where you're playing with no, your friends. No, it's, no? uh, I, I think it's third person kind of like Assassin's Creed, you know, where you, you see your whole character and you can move around. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, it's not the bird's eye view, which I, I haven't been into those games in, in a really, really long time. Yeah, I've seen a couple. They did a couple Marvel games like that where it was the bird's eye view where you that's run around right. and play yeah. any, any of the characters and shit. But I figure that's what this was. It was just like another one of those. But it's no. like an over-the-shoulder kind of. Yeah, well, mm, uh, kind of over-the-shoulder. But, I mean, you, you could see their legs, their arms, everything. It's okay. not it's not a first-person thing where you're just seeing the screen. It's, yeah. you know, you're seeing the whole... I, I believe it's called third-person. Yeah, just classic gaming. third person. Yeah, That's tight. Yeah, that's that's, that's what I prefer in, in video games. Like, Though I have been going back, and I'm getting a little bit more into the first-person shooters. But there was a time where it was like... There were so many of those games coming out, and they were all so similar. Yeah. And... Uh, so that wore off on me, but a, f a buddy of mine uh, talked me into getting into Borderlands. Dude. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I played that with him, like, online for, like, a couple months, and he was way more into it than I, I was. <laughs> I crushed he knew, that like, game when it came He out. knew, like, every name for every gun, and, oh, this is the gun you want. Like, that's cool, man. Like, he just knew entirely too much about it, but, you know. It's whatever, a fun whatever makes you happy. You know, I liked about Borderlands was it didn't matter what we were doing. I didn't mm -hmm. give a fuck about the storyline. It looked really cool. 
Uh, it played really smooth, and I was having fun. Like, I'm always having fun in that game. The enemies mm. are interesting and kind of mm. goofy, and, like, the weapons are always screwy. And you're like, yeah. oh, look at this weird thing I got going on. And, like, I just I have a blast playing those Borderlands games. Yeah, and that's, games. that's all I did. with. I didn't pay any attention to the story. I mean, to be honest, I was always stoned when I was playing it. Yeah, that's the way to do and it. And so my buddy would be telling me, oh, remember this? I'm like, no. <laughs> and he'd start talking about different characters. I'm like, who's that? Like, you've spent 20 hours in this game. You don't know who that is? Like, no, wasn't really paying attention, just, like, shooting people. So <laughs> oh, We got it when it first came out and like uh, a couple of my friends wanted to like the gotta watch the storyline in order and then uh i didn't give a fuck and a couple of my other friends didn't right so then the, so for me the storyline was this mashup because i was just jumping in and out of everybody's games and like mm -hmm. going back a step and i didn't care let's go kill some stuff you know yeah. like let's run i've played this level three times this month but i'm gonna I'm going to kill some stuff with my buddies and have a fucking blast doing it. It's a good stress reliever. Oh, yeah, totally. <clears throat> and, yeah, dude, I could jump into that game anytime and fucking play it, man. Yeah. Uh, it was just always fun. I didn't, I didn't care what we were doing. That's something I've appreciated about video games for a long time is, like, you could spend $60 on a brand new video game, and it could provide you 100 hours of entertainment. Oh, know? yeah. Uh, you go out to a bar and spend 60 bucks, and you're not even, you know, you and your girlfriend, you're not even got a buzz on or anything oh, you know, yeah that's just it's it, it could be it could be a way to you know save some money is just by sitting at home playing video games it's, it's doesn't a great doesn't, doesn't make you a loser you know it just uh <laughs> no video games are hella fun yeah and social i started playing animal crossing that game has no point <laughs> And I'm not familiar with Animal Crossing. It, it's this thing that happened. Um, it's kind of like uh, Tiger King for COVID, right? It's like everybody watched Tiger King yeah. and everybody <laughs> was playing Animal Crossing on Switch. And I was like, oh, I'll check it out, whatever. And it's super relaxing. Like, it's not like a video game where you're like, I got to beat this level or something. It's like, hey, go collect some seashells and like mm -hmm. dig up some bones and we'll put them in this museum thing and... We need some wood. You mind chopping some trees down and getting us some wood? But you're just on this island. It's the most relaxing fucking game I've ever played in my life. It's just right like, on. yeah, it's it's not like fuck. I gotta kill this guy, and I, you know. <laughs> I know this. You got the uh, part. the VR headset over there. What what games Doom have you been part. enjoying with that? Uh, the VR I went nuts on. Um, I saved up for a while, and um, and then I ended up going with the PlayStation because ultimately I was like. Whatever VR I buy, first mm. gen. Yeah. So it's going to suck, right? Yeah. In like two years, we're going to look at this thing and be like, this is a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> compared to the one on my phone that I have with mm. these glasses or whatever the hell comes out, right? Um, but uh, but no, so it was, it was a great price, but I got all the fucking games I could on the PlayStation 1. Our favorites are... Um, What's it called? Oh, 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 oh. Where are you playing? I haven't played in a while. There's a sword game. It's like a laser sword. Beat Saber. Oh, right on. Beat Saber is friggin' amazing. And uh, it's perfect for that generation as well of, of VR, mm -hmm. uh, where you're on a cube, and it's like maybe six feet by six feet, and it's like a pedestal, and then boxes fly at your face, yeah. and they're blue or they're red, and your lasers happen to be blue or red. So it's like you got to <laughs> cut the blue box with the blue sword, <laughs> dummy. Um, and then they have arrows on them, so you swipe in the arrow, the mm -hmm. direction the arrows are going. So you're like, bah, 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 bah. But so the graphics are perfect. You're just like, I accept this Tron world, <clears throat> right? Like it's not, they're not trying to make it look real. It's yeah. all made out of lasers and glass and shit. Um, and so you're just like, sure, this is, this is fucking where I am now. And you move with the camera. You're not moving with a joystick or anything. And the sword, the, the response time is pretty okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll come off every once in a while when you start really getting into the fast levels. But for, for the first generation VR, I think Beat Saber is probably the best fucking VR game you can play because it's just like where everything is at. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I really enjoyed this game, uh, Dino Frontier, but it's entirely too short. It was it was the most is expensive it? game I, I bought on VR, and uh, I think I beat it in like seven hours of gameplay or something like that. There's not like, like an open map it? version of that game? No. You just talked me out of buying that game, bro. I was about to buy that game. Yeah, don't don't buy it. Unless it goes down super cheap. You know, yeah. If you can get it for five bucks, jump on it. But I think I paid like... 20 for it or something and i was like fuck yeah already done but i've got it's like, part of the demo right 
that I th- PlayStation demo? I think maybe, maybe, it, maybe it is. Maybe that's how I got turned on to it. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I played yeah. the demo again recently, and I was like, I should get this game. This game's pretty cool. Yeah, it's too short. That sucks. Um, but yeah, I did the same thing as you. I bought like a shitload of VR games, and I've got six of them I haven't even tried out. You know, they're just sitting there collecting dust. Yeah. One of these days. Well, going into the VR world, right, you got to move the shit out of the way and, like, break all the headset and, like, you're committed mm-hmm. to this event yeah. now, right? It's not like, oh, I'll turn the Xbox on and maybe I'll play some games for a second, but, like, I'm going to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's like, no, this is what you're doing now. Yeah, you got to commit to it. Yeah, so it's so I do find myself playing less VR. I always play. I play when people come over and people, you have fucking VR headset. I go, dude, let me turn it on for you. You've never played, right? And they go, I've never played VR, and I'm like, oh, we're definitely putting it on your face then. Mm-hmm. And everyone loves it. You know, the first time you put that shit on, and like I'll put the Batman simulator on, and they're just like, no way. Yeah. I, I got annoyed with the Batman game though, because um, oh, we actually playing it, yeah, yeah, like like at first it's like this is so cool, I'm Batman, yeah. and then you try to do shit like grab your your batarang, and you're like, why can't I grab it? Like, what position do I have to be in to <laughs> where his hand well is actually going to grab the fucking batarang? <laughs> Uh, but but yeah. as an initial experience, you know, if you're like, if you're like just going to play the intro and like you go and suit up and like learn how to use this stuff and you're like, am I fucking Batman right now? This is amazing. <laughs> it's like you are. Let me take it. Let's play another game. And then <laughs> if I could do what I saw them doing at CES where they had like their big 3D game setups where these guys were like on these stationary treadmills and they had their, oh, yeah. they had their special guns and their, their headset and they could run as far as they wanted to in any direction. I'm like, I would get in shape with that shit, dude. That would, dude, be, easy. That would be awesome. Beat Saber does that to me because yeah. you're, you have to, the whole thing is physical movement. There's no joysticks involved and you're like fucking ninja fighting these boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I have to put a fan on and get my gym shorts out and shit to play because I am me. If I'm wearing my regular clothes and like fucking thick ass pants, I am sweat teen fucking one song. And, uh, dude, with those treadmills, it, people are going to get in hella good shape just to play video games. I got in good shape back with the Wii. Yeah, like with tennis. The, with the boxing, really. Oh, you like the boxing the, the one? The wee boxing. I would do that every day. And, man, I was I was kind of on a weird diet, though, of just drinking coffee and using the wee. <laughs> 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 I was losing, like, two and a half pounds every day. I was like, this works for me. I think I'm going to keep this up. That'll definitely work. <laughs> That'll get you thin as fuck right it's there. It's not the healthiest. I, I, wouldn't, definitely I wouldn't recommend it. You'd probably have a heart attack. but I loved the wee. It was great when it first came out. Yeah, but they, they never really had any other good games for it. It was like Wii Sports and That was it. <laughs> there was there was another game that Tiger Woods Golf. There was a, a oh. game that Sega made for it, uh, that was all like monochrome and it was extremely violent and like every other word was like fuck and motherfuck. And it was oh, an right. awesome game. And you could Sounds it was awesome. like you it was kinda like uh the running man. Like you were like on this game show and you had to kill people like in really violent <laughs> ways. It was really fucked up, but it was a lot of fun. I can't for the life of me remember what the name of, name of the game was, but I was surprised that came out on the, on the Wii, man. That's funny. They're usually yeah. pretty family friendly stuff. Yeah, I had a cool uh, Resident Evil game. It was like a shooter, like an arcade shooter, uh-huh. and you put it in a big like fake gun thing, and you had a fake knife. It was cool. The Wii was tight. I really enjoyed it. I got um, what's it called? I just got virtual reality golf. It took forever for them to come out with it on the PlayStation. Yeah. But I always loved playing the Tiger Woods Golf on the Wii. That was like my favorite thing. Just put fucking 18 holes on, put the controller down, come yeah. out, you know, hit the bong, knock a couple <laughs> holes in. All right, I got shit to do. Yeah, the Wii Golf was fun. Yeah. Um, I've never actually played real golf, you know, other than, you know. <laughs> Me neither. Putt-putt, fucking with a windmill for like 20 minutes, but never, never the real deal. I know I can't stand watching it. I, I don't. Never understood people that could uh, that could watch golf. Like I love George Carlin had this thing he said. He was like, uh, you're, "You're you're hitting this ball that's this big, like a mile away, and then you got to chase after it." He's like, "It's the most boring thing in the world to watch. I, I'd rather watch flies fuck than watch people <laughs> play golf." And it's so think true. Of anything more boring? I can't watch it, man. But I know people that like watch it and they're really into it. I'm like. Fuck. How? How? It's so boring. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's fun when you're playing it mm. and you're like, oh, look what I did. But 
fucking watching other people hit a ball around, man. Not my cup of tea. No way. But the virtual reality golf is tight. Yeah. I really have enjoy it, man. And uh-huh. it's uh, it's definitely uh, I do the same thing now. I put the eighteen holes on. Mm-hmm. And you just come in, put the headset on, and all of a sudden you're just like out in nature, and there's birds chirping, <laughs> and you can look around in 360 degrees and kind of be like, oh, fucking hey, walk up to the hole. <laughs> cool. It's it's a trip, man. It really is nice to get out of, like, this space. My yeah. little, uh, my tiny little dungeon that I'm fucking quarantined in. Well, you're, you've got a pretty big house, dude. It's, I mean. It is nice. If you're spending all your time in here, it's. It's not huge, but I wouldn't say it's tiny either. (laughs) Just so much shit, you know? I got to get... We're figuring out, like, it's phase two of this whole operation where, like, Mm. all my studio shit and all my band gear and all this camera equipment, it all goes into, like, a fucking studio, Mm. and we can have our house. (laughs) Because... I'm sick of having all this shit in the house. It's a mess. How's how's it been affecting your day-to-day? Uh, I mean, we get, we're used to it now, right? But I mean, still like if I got to go out in the garage and I got to, I got to fucking sidestep past the PA <laughs> and, uh, and I got a, you know, this is my, I mean, this is my living room, right? I got fucking yeah. curtains on both sides and the couch is all set up and cameras everywhere. So when you're not using the space for podcasting, like, do you guys like come in here and eat dinner and watch TV or? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll like put the tripods down and we'll hang out and watch TV. Mm. And we got the little dinner tables. Uh, and that's like, we hang out and we put our little table here and we fucking eat our dinner and mm. it's like, whatever, you know, we got to get shit done. And we, mm-hmm. uh, there's nowhere to do this at. Initially, we had a space like we were going in on it with some people and there was like a whole plan um, that included me like doing live concerts and shit at the same time. And uh, and of course, the virus shut that down really hard. Yeah. And here I was with my thumb up my ass and I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm did not, you, uh, did I'm you go out for the march? Anyways. Huh? Did you go out for the march like last week? I don't even know no. what that acronym is. It's like uh, W-E-E-C. It's everybody in live events. Oh. They were pushing cases and driving I mean, downtown Las Vegas, and people were asking me if I want to do it. I'm like, no, I'm kind of a pussy, man. Like, <laughs> I, I It's too hot outside, number one, and I'm a germaphobe, and I don't want to catch this fucking shit that's going around. So, Yeah. But, yeah, it's, you hear a lot rough. of people talk about it like, you know, everything's just bullshit, and it's like, I don't know, not man. Bullshit, man. Like, I've, I've got a close personal friend that works for Dignity Health, and, like, she's had three of her colleagues die from it, and she's like, this is not a joke, man. Anybody that thinks that this shit is not serious or they think, think it's a hoax, go to a hospital and see what things are like. And um, my mother's health is, is declining, and she's, uh, we've had to take her to the hospital a couple times, and it's... It's fucking scary, dude. Like, yeah, it's like, do we even take her, or is she going to get fucking COVID? <laughs> yeah, like, we, we took her to Henderson Hospital, and the whole time I'm just like, half the people in there are there for COVID-related reasons, and like, am I going to get out of this waiting room and have it myself, you know? And So I've been tested a couple times, which, uh, have, have you had to get tested yet, or? No. Been through the process. It's pretty impressive. I went how, to a doctor quickly... too, and they didn't even bother. They were like, "Oh, mm. what are you here for?" And I was just like, hey, "You know, fucking uh, other stuff, pre- re- refilling prescriptions and shit like that." You know. Yeah. And I was like, "Nah, I don't want to. I don't care." Friggin', uh, like I'm pretty confident that uh, most of us got in in January at CES. Yeah. Because like everybody got hammer fucked sick. Like I was sick for two weeks. CES all the way through into the next gig, all the way through that gig. Mm-hmm. And I was just sick as fuck. And uh, and I don't get sick. I just don't, man. Like, uh, I take a bunch of vitamins and I eat right and I work out. Like, my yeah. immune system works. I'm 35. Like, it, it takes, if I get sick, I get, like, a sniffles. And then, like, two days later, I'm fine. Now, I got the flu, like, really bad. I think it was, like, last December. Yeah. that's I was, when, that's... I was working a CT gig and I had to leave the gig. I was like, I'm running a fever, man. I'm not feeling good. And that's what happened to everybody, man. December <clears throat> into January, 
um you know everyone's like oh february into march is when it's like no the fucking virus was happening in december and january mm. and they only started realizing oh we should do something about this in february and then march they did something about it mm -hmm. but uh but in the meantime you know those those three months everybody was getting fucking sick real sick everybody i knew mm. and, and it's like and for us you know working in las vegas in the conventions uh it's literally everybody from around the world from every country uh they're they're coming straight at us all the time and we gotta yeah. go put mics on them and, and send them on stage and do everything with them and you, you gotta think about everything somebody uh, i was working with out at the cosmo he comes to town and he's fine the first day the the next day i see him and his eye is like swollen up huge he's like i guess i touched a banister or something and then touched my eye and he was yeah. very unpleasant to look at for the rest of the week. <laughs> you got to be careful with that stuff. Like, yeah. shit is gross. Mm -hmm. And especially in a tourist town, when people don't care about this shit, right? They're, like, intentionally, like, gr doing gross stuff to things anyways. Mm -hmm. And uh, and trash and stuff. And it's like, yeah, just like you said, you can just touch a banister and touch your eye. And it's like... Mm -hmm. I think this. I, I think the coronavirus has really given people a sense of awareness of that too. Where it's like, oh, shit's not clean. And like, mm. if you go out in public, you should wash your fucking hands, man. Like, I'm real OCD about that. It's a, it's such a weird thing to me. Uh, you know, you you before the pandemic, you traveled for work too a lot, right? Yeah. And it, uh, to me, I bring my own pillowcase. Something I've been noticing for <laughs> years is. Uh, you know, because we travel and because the industry we work in, we have to use public restrooms because, you know, you're yeah. working 16, 17 hour days. Um, and it doesn't matter where you're at, man. It, you could be in a, a country club that, you know, people have to pay six figures to attend that country club and the bathroom people are still fucking disgusting and they're mm -hmm. inconsiderate. And I wanted to actually make a documentary about that. About people in the bathroom and how they about, behave? About public restrooms in our country. About how it doesn't matter where you go, but people don't, I think people don't think about it, you know? And, and mm -hmm. the way I manners. am, if, if I go use a public restroom, it's cleaner when I leave the, the, the stall than it was when I went in, you yeah. know? I'm not leaving a mess for somebody else to clean, clean it up. That's just, that's how I'm built. I don't want people cleaning up after me. And so <laughs> I remember being a, at an airport and this guy came out of the stall and there was like a watermelon sized turd that he just left in there. And I was like, fucking really, dude? No, you need to get back in there and clean up after yourself. <laughs> no, you do not leave shit like that. And I called him out in front of like 30 people and he's just like, oh, fuck you, whatever. I was like, yeah. no, clean up after yourself. That's that's not cool, man. I, I wanted to. uh that's the society we live in. <laughs> I wanted to print out signs with with pictures of shit like that and just start pasting them on like on stall doors, you know, and saying this shit is not cool. You know, your parents don't work here. Clean up after yourself. Respect people. Yeah. Respect the people that are making minimum wage that have to come and clean this bathroom. You know, uh, you couldn't pay me enough to clean up somebody else's shit. You know, it's yeah. <clears throat> I used to. I used to do it for free as an intern just to be sit in the back of the recording studios, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, we need you to come in early and mop the floors and make coffee and clean the fucking toilets. And <laughs> it's just like, I'm in the, I'm in the music industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, as a teenager, I worked in fast food. And uh, like once a week, somebody would clog up the men's room toilet with just a turd that was just too big to flush. And we, we designated this person as the fecal phantom. <laughs> and uh, usually, like, I would just decline. I would be yeah. like, fucking fire me. I am not cleaning that up. You are not paying me enough. <laughs> and so I'll never forget uh, my manager taking his, his Char Hut t-shirt off and wrapping it around his face and just catching him plunging this toilet and stopping mid plunge and look at me and saying, Don't say I never did anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> Back to it. Whoever dropped that fucking monster turd needs to deal with it. <laughs> My little brother Eric, I'll put him on the spot. He he would drop fucking Coke cans in the toilet all the what time. The fuck I don't know how you? he's making that happen. Mm -hmm. Fucking like <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, dude, like you get up in the morning growing up and it's like, what is that? How did that come out of your body? <laughs> 
dude. And he just leaves it. Have not my been, problem. Have you been on painkillers for two months and you're finally getting that brick out? What yeah. the fuck's wrong with you? Like, that's not healthy, man. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. That shouldn't be coming out of you. <laughs> and he's still a little kid in this place. This is a man I'm talking about. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Fucking kid. So, yeah, uh, no, nah, it was ridiculous. It was, yeah, made us fucking laugh our asses off, though, because poop <laughs> is funny. It's always funny. It's always funny. I'm a, I'm, I'm very immature, because I, yeah. I still laugh at shit like that. We're monkeys, man. We are. We are a great ape species, and, uh, and, and we find that poop is funny. I put on uh, Kenny versus Spinny. And it was who could cut the biggest fart. <laughs> I put it on at my parents' house, right? Like just the, they didn't know what to watch. And I was like, fucking <laughs> fart jokes aren't funny. And if any of you fucking laugh at this, you're going to hell. You're all retarded. <laughs> and we're all just cracking up. We can't help ourselves. If you don't have a funny fart story, you just haven't lived. Oh, yeah. Fucking, uh, yeah, too many. Too many. Let's not start to have fart stories. <laughs> oh, getting delirious. We could do five more hours of this podcast just telling fart stories. Just telling fart stories. I'm fucking, uh, we actually have been doing this podcast for an hour and 55 minutes already. You don't say. It has been, uh, where, it has. Where do you see that at? At the bottom right there. See here, it says, wow. uh, AJ see, was right. It goes by quickly. Duration. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, we've already been talking for fucking two hours. So how about we take that time and fucking cut it? And maybe I'll roll it to huh? No, and no we'll fucking go burn something or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, I'd like to think it's time to say uh, thank you to my guest, Clint Long, amazing video engineer and artist. I love having you on the podcast. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day, sir. Thanks for having me, buddy. And uh, You're this, good at this, man. Yeah, thanks, Keep it man. up. Yeah, I have a lot of fun doing it, man. And this... It could actually turn into hopefully, a thing. So. Hopefully you'll be making some money come, like, episode 100. Who knows? Yeah, that's what I think. You know, yeah. like, you know, 100 episodes. I mean, after uh, after it climbs a certain amount, it starts it starts snowballing, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not just digging for fucking one or two people at a time. Yeah. So, uh, but I don't look at the numbers, right? <laughs> I just let it happen. I'm just not worried about how many subscribers I have or how many well, views I have. I think that's the right thing to do, man. Put it out there every week and be consistent. Just focus on doing your thing. Yeah, you know? I love it. I love it a lot. So, yeah. Um, peace. Fade to black and shit, man. It's been to the fullest. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.